Hi everybody, it's Daphne here with another art demo video. If you're new to my channel, I am the artist of the furry fantasy adventure comic Tall Tales, now available online at www.talltalesonline.com, with Tales spelled T-A-I-L-S. The first story arc, Thieves' Quest, is also available at my website in a complete trade paperback collection containing all 20 issues in one volume. So today, we're finally moving on to the second video in my Making Comics series. Today is July 1st when I record this, and if you saw my first video about scheduling your comic, you will already know that today marks the first day of the second issue cycle for my Tall Tales Tears of the Mothers series. In this four month cycle, I will actually be working on two comics, issue two of Tall Tales and issue four of my other fantasy comic, Ego Raven, which I'll talk more about in another video. Today I want to show how layouts make scheduling your comics easier, whether you're just doing one comic or multiple comics. In this case, because I have completed layouts for two comics, I can schedule in one Ego Raven page per week along with my two already scheduled Tall Tales pages. The whole idea is that the more you prepare yourself for your schedule, the less you have to actually think during your process and actually get your work done more efficiently. I originally was going to say faster, but faster is not always better, so I don't want to put emphasis on it. The goal is to complete your comic efficiently and with the best quality you can put into it. Of course, this really doesn't apply if you have actual company deadlines to meet. As a disclaimer, I'm doing this making comic series from a self-scheduling, self-publisher point of view. And even though I'm calling the series Making Comics, there is nothing set in stone with anything I say. Accurately, this series is about how I make comics, and the information I put out can be changed according to what you need for your project, which in the end is the important thing. A couple of months ago, I got the script from my writer, J.D. Calderon, for the second story arc, which adds up to eight issues when completed, or at least that's the idea. And that's where the importance of layouts come in. To me, layouts are the backbone of any comic project. Without layouts, you're just flying blind as you draw your pages. Maybe you'll be able to get through the project without them, but layout is how you control panel positioning, lettering, pacing, character positions, pretty much the overall flow of the issue, if not the entire series. Layouts are how you keep your project from crashing and burning. The more layouts you can do in advance, the better. So as you can see from the scripts, I use simple post-it tabs to mark out the individual issues. This way I have a visual for where I am in the script where I work. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to read all your scripts through just to give you an overall idea as to how the story is going to unfold. In this particular case, I use yellow highlighter to separate the dialogue from just background descriptions. If you're not doing a single issue comic, I highly recommend that you write all of your scripts first or get your writer to do it as in my case. This way, not only do you have a complete story to work with, which makes life a lot easier, but you also get to catch story mistakes on the way. Nothing more frustrating than starting a story series than realizing halfway through that the story doesn't work and needs to be changed. Or worse, having to change the story that impacts all of the comic art you did already. Do you read web comics or indie comics and wonder why some of them just stop suddenly and disappear? Dollars to dimes is usually because the artist drew and wrote the comic as they went along and ended up in a corner. And instead of admitting the path that they were on was not really well planned, they just abandoned the project just because they didn't want to change any of the work they committed to. Now that's just my theory, but I've seen it happen way too many times personally to not give it some credence. Drawing comics is hard work to begin with. There's no reason to make it harder on yourself. Now that I have read all the issues and I know the overall timeline of the story, I start marking how the script is going to break down as pages. As you can see here, here's page one, page two, page three, and so on. I have to admit that this takes some practice, but as with anything, the more you do it, the easier it gets. When breaking down a script, you want to keep in mind the elements that need to go into the page. Most importantly, the lettering. Nobody wants to see all that artwork get covered up because the artist underestimated how much lettering was going to go on the page. Again, this is all practice. Look at other comics to see how they're lettered to give you an idea as to how much space you need. 
In my case, since I letter all of my own comics, and I know how wordy J.D. Calderon can get, I have a pretty good idea as to how all the dialogue, in this case everything that's highlighted, is going to fit. As I go through scenes and descriptions, I mark what pages these scenes are going to be on. My goal is to have each issue be no more than 32 pages, but at the same time, I do not want to compress or stretch out scenes to their detriment. So I just go through the script as loose as I can just to see how everything falls and then I can go back to fix what I need to. So with issue one, after breaking it down, I came across my main problem. I want a 32 page comic but the script is only giving me enough info for 27 pages. Now this might have changed since digital and on demand printing has been a thing, but I like to keep my page counts pretty much industry standard. I have too many pages for a 24 page book, but not enough for 32. Now my layouts are going to be even more important. Every artist does their layouts differently, but the main thing is to map out the comic before any actual art is committed to paper. For me, I decided to go with a simple notebook I got at Staples and using the same tab post-its, marked out 32 pages for each issue. For this book, I can fit three issues with enough pages to alter layouts if for some reason 32 pages don't work out. The next thing I did was to print out a basic six panel comic book grid as a template. Instead of measuring out anything, I went to comicbookpaper.com where I just put in the number of panels I needed and it created the template for me to print out. The template is in proportion to the final size I will be doing the final art on. This website can create comic book templates of all kinds, so I highly recommend it as a tool to make your creative process easier. So now with my template, I can start laying out my issue. For my books, I like making the first and last page full images, but I still use the template to keep the layout in proportion to the full size paper I will eventually use. So with each page, following what I broke down in the script, I trace out the six panels, as you can see here, the six panels are here. Then from there, break them down even further to get the pacing that I need. I like using pen with my layouts because it keeps me committed to just doing the work and not caring about being messy. With pencil, I find it easy to get fussy with erasing. As you can see, I am very rough with my layouts. I see no point in wasting energy on more detailed drawings when all I'm doing is essentially setting up a map. Some of these panels will most likely be changed finally to the pages, but thanks to the layout, I know where my changes are going to be and what I need to do instead of having anything end up surprising me. Now, remember when I said I had 27 pages out of 32? Well, thanks to the layout, I now have 30 pages. I'm two pages short. Now that's better than being five pages short. I can fill the two pages in with advertising or pinups, but I'm the type that likes to have the book use all the pages from front to back. So what I did was go back and see where I can tweak some pages and panels a bit to, to get the book to fit those last two pages. And with a little work, I actually got my issue to fit the 32 pages that I want. So after the layouts are done, and in this case, we're starting with the layouts for issue two, I scan the pages in, and then I print out full versions of them to Lightbox onto the final pages. Or you can just redraw the layouts onto your pages. I like to Lightbox because for me, it's all about not thinking about it. I don't wanna feel like I'm wasting my time redrawing anything. I trace my layouts using a non-photo blue pencil, but since that's hard to see, for the sake of this video, I will trace lightly with a regular pencil so you can see the final result. As you can see, I'm not even tracing the layouts exactly. I'm just putting enough marks on the page's reference since I'll have my actual layouts to work from. After my layouts are traced, I can go ahead and pencil in the details to prep the pages for inking. Depending on how I feel, I may prep more than my two page a week quota, just to have a completed scene ready. If I'm lucky, I may be able to have more than two pages completed by the end of the week. And thanks to having layouts done, I can see exactly how many pages are in a scene, so I can decide whether I can actually get ambitious or not. And in this case, I decided to go ahead and sketch out four pages for the week. 
To give you another example of layouts, here are two Ego Raven pages that I sketched out directly onto the page. Since this comic is older, this is when I did the layouts directly onto the final pages without using the notebook method. So if I needed to make changes, I had to change them directly on the pages themselves. Using the notebook method is so much easier for me, which is why I use it now. But in the end, use the method you're most comfortable with. As I stated before, the whole point is to have your book completely mapped out, so there are no surprises. So I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you want to see more art demo videos like this, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. If you have any questions or any ideas for future videos, feel free to leave a comment below. If you want more information about Tall Tales or any of my other artwork, including how to commission your own custom art from me, links are also listed down below. Thank you again for your support and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye!